This is the lecture corresponding to section um, 14.7. One of the interesting questions about black holes is uh, how can we detect them? Because they are black, they do not irradiate. Well, it turns out that as mass goes into a black hole, it can leave a trace. And for that, we need mass to fall into the black hole. And that uh, on its way in, the mass can be producing radiation, can be producing X-rays, etc. So here we have um, a, uh, uh, the example of a, a black hole in a binary system. Being in a binary system, there, there's going to be uh, mass available. So this mass is, will be falling into a black hole depending on the geometry. It will be producing uh, a so-called accretion disk and uh, on, on its way in it can be producing the gas as it falls in it can be producing uh, radiation. This radiation, this gas as it goes in it will have some sort of a path kind of similar to this uh, water going down the drain but uh, as it uh, swirls around it will have um, it will be producing the a Doppler shift depending on its motion relative to us. This is one example. Uh, HD 226868 is a binary system in which uh, there is a huge, uh, extremely large um, the star and uh, a massive uh, black hole. And in this case, uh, the the gas from the star is falling into the, bl the black hole for producing the accretion disk and on its way in there is a high concentration of mass that produces radiation, it produces uh, x-rays in this case. So whenever you see something that is bright but uh, has some sort of a source of x-rays that cannot be distinguished properly, most likely uh, that can be taken as evidence of a black hole. And uh, the same thing can happen um, in, in collisions of black holes or in collisions of neutron stars with black holes. They can leave a trace that can be used to distinguish them. This is a hot uh, area of research as, uh, as early as uh, 2013. People were still looking at um, uh, understanding what is um, the black hole that is in at the center of our Milky Way. Now, our Milky Way has this massive uh, black hole that is um, that has uh, uh, millions of uh, solar masses, but uh, it's not the only one that is in the Milky Way. Up to now, there have been ten black holes identified in binary systems in our um, galaxy and we have a partial list here this is um, the name of the x-ray source and this is the mass of the companion remember they have to be in a binary system and this is the mass of the black hole so they are uh, small in size compared to the one that is at the center the one at uh, SAG A Going back to 226868, this would be the visible part, but here, this is the visible part, but the here would be the X-ray source. Now, what we see here is uh, just a coincidence, uh, that's another, uh, another star nearby. And this picture was taken in um, on Palo Mar Observatory, north of San Diego. I visited the, the observatory a few years ago. Not long ago, actually watching something being ripped apart as it falls towards a giant black hole would be science fiction. But this is becoming reality for astronomers using ESA's very large telescope. This is the ESOcast, cutting-edge science and life behind the scenes of ESO, the European Southern Observatory.
Hello and welcome to the ESOcast. In this episode, we will see how science fiction has turned into science fact, as astronomers observe the progressive destruction of a cloud of gas that's being pulled in by a supermassive black hole. ESO telescopes have been used to track the motion of stars around the giant black hole at the center of our galaxy for 20 years. This black hole's mass is a hefty 4 million times that of the Sun, earning it the title of supermassive black hole. Although it is huge, this black hole is currently supplied with little material and is not shining brightly, but this is about to change. Using ESO's Very Large Telescope, a team of astronomers has discovered a new object that is heading almost straight towards a black hole at vertiginous speed. The object is not a star, but a cloud of gas. The cloud consists mainly of hydrogen gas, gas which we see anyhow in the galactic center all over the place. This particular cloud weighs more or less three times the mass of Earth, so it's a rather small and tiny blob only but it glows very brightly in the uh, light of uh, the stars which are surrounding the cloud. As the astronomers watched, the cloud has been picking up pace as it gets closer to the giant black hole. Its speed has doubled in the last seven years and it is now speeding towards the black hole at more than 8 million kilometers per hour. The astronomers have already seen the cloud's outer layers becoming more and more disrupted over the last few years as it approaches the black hole. But the exciting part is yet to come. The black hole, imagine it sitting here, has a tremendous gravitational force. And the cloud, as it comes in, it will be elongated and stretched. It will become essentially like spaghetti. It will be elongated and falling into the black hole. Well, the next few years will be really fantastic and exciting because we are probing the territory. Here this cloud comes in, gets disrupted, but now it will begin to interact with the hot gas right around the black hole. We have never seen this before. No one knows what will happen next. The cloud will probably heat up and may start to emit powerful X-rays as it gets disrupted. In the end, the material will eventually disappear by falling into the black hole. For the scientists, this event is truly a unique chance to probe the hot gas around the black hole. But this process of how material gets into black holes really is not clear to us. We don't understand it in any detail. And here in the galactic center, we have an opportunity, so to speak, to have a probe of this, this process, how material really gets added to the black hole and what the physical processes are, how the interactions happen in this very central region. That's a fantastic opportunity. This is indeed science fiction becoming science fact. for many years, for four years or so, and nothing happened. And uh, nothing happened uh, presumably because of uh, the dust that is between the center of the galaxy and the Earth. So if something happened, we couldn't see it. some questions that you might find useful for another quiz. I recommend that you try to answer them before looking at the answers. And here are the, here are the answers. Next is uh, section 14.8. 
In, th in this one, in this section, we're, we're going to classify the black holes according to the mass, and basically into supermassive, intermediate mass, and primordial black holes. The supermassive uh, black holes have uh, thousands of millions of uh, solar masses, and uh, they are usually at the center of a galaxy, whereas the intermediate masses are somewhere between hundreds and thousands of uh, solar masses. Now, the primordial black holes, they are totally different. They are extremely small, as low mass, not even uh, solar mass, but um, they were formed at the, um, in a di very different way at the beginning of the, of, of the Big Bang, at the beginning of the universe. And because of that, they can be composed of just a, f a few grams, but um, given that they are moving very fast, they can be extremely dangerous. Up to now, nobody has seen one, although people uh, continue looking. Uh, here on, the, um, on this picture here, we have uh, the center of the galaxy M Messier 87 that has uh, gas and stars in a very tight orbit, just like we saw in the video before. And that is another way of uh, finding the location of a black hole. If a star, if a star is moving, and then all of a sudden it turns around, that means there is a center of gravity there. Even if we don't see it, there is something pulling, and that could be a, a very massive uh, black hole. Here we have um, something about the first black holes that were born and how they grew. And uh, in this uh, computer simulation, they are uh, representing the black holes in, in white in the early universe. How early? Well, about 200 million uh, years after the Big Bang. The first black holes in the universe likely had a dramatic influence on their surroundings. According to a sophisticated new simulation produced by researchers at Slack National Accelerator Laboratory and NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, these black holes are thought to have formed from the first stars in the universe stars which burned very hot and very bright, emitting so much radiation that they pushed away nearby gas clouds, seen here in blue. These stars subsequently collapsed in on themselves, forming black holes. The simulation covers a time span of about 200 million years. At first, the black hole remains relatively isolated, but as nearby gas clouds began to get sucked in, Enough radiation was generated to push the clouds away, creating a complex push-pull feedback loop. This made the areas surrounding the black hole both tumultuous and dynamic. The researchers believe this simulation will spur scientists to rethink how radiation from these early black holes affected their surroundings. Another way of looking uh of, of knowing that there is a black hole is uh, through the accretion disk. The accretion disk is the mass that is uh, being attracted by the supermassive black hole. In the past, we saw just a few, in the previous section, we saw how an accretion disk is formed if you have a black hole uh, in a binary system. But if you have a supermassive black hole, you don't need a, a, a binary companion to provide the mass. These are so massive that they will be pulling their own uh, mass by themselves and uh, they will be forming the accretion disk. Now, the gas moves in, but uh, it swirls around and uh, in doing that, it will increase in velocity and consequently in temperature. This is a, a cartoonish way of representing that, but uh, the color code is that uh, red is the coolest gas and violet is the hottest gas, so you can see that it's cool out here, and as it moves in, the gas gets hotter and hotter, and the hottest is right uh, on the edge of the black hole. So hot means high temperature, which in turn means high velocity. So if you have collisions between particles at high velocity, they will be um, producing radiation, and that's how the radiation gets, uh, the, those extracts get produced. Here we have um, a, the possibility of finding uh, supermassive 
black holes, and according to um, uh, the Chandra X-ray Observatory and in the new Galaxy Catalog 3627. The spiral galaxy NGC 3627 is located about 30 million light years from Earth. Astronomers recently completed a survey of galaxies to look for supermassive black holes. Of the 62 galaxies, 37, including NGC 3627, were found to have X-ray sources at their centers and are candidates for being powered by supermassive black holes. Seven of these 37 were previously unknown. This result confirms other Chandra studies that show X-ray surveys are particularly good at finding supermassive black holes that are relatively inactive. There is one interesting case in which there is a, a small galaxy, very small galaxy, with a supermassive black hole. And um, the best uh, explanation for this comes from the fact that uh, this is the remnant of a collision between two galaxies. Astronomers have found a big surprise inside a galaxy far away from Earth. I'm going to skip this one because the sound is not that good. I'm going to go to the next one. The international team of scientists about. says it has discovered a supermassive black hole at the heart of an ultra compact dwarf galaxy dubbed M60 UCD1 that's about 54 million light years from Earth. It's the smallest galaxy known to contain such a giant black hole. Using data from the Gemini North Telescope on Hawaii's Mauna Kea and the Hubble Space Telescope, the scientists found that while M60 UCD1 is relatively tiny, with a diameter of only 300 light years, its black hole has a mass equivalent to 21 million suns. That's amazing, the scientists said, considering that the Milky Way galaxy is 500 times larger, but is thought to have a black hole containing the mass of only 4 million suns. The scientists, led by Dr. Anil Seth of the University of Utah, said the new findings suggest there may be many more supermassive black holes that aren't discovered yet. A black hole is a place in space where matter is densely squeezed into a tiny space, making gravity pull so hard that even light cannot get out. The discoveries also provide new clues on how dwarf galaxies are formed, the scientists said. They believe that M60 UCD1 was once a large galaxy containing 10 billion stars and a supermassive black hole to match. But when it collided with a much bigger neighboring galaxy called M60, its outer regions were torn away. All that's left of the dwarf galaxy today is its core. Scientists believe that a similar story could be behind the formation of other dwarf galaxies, which may also harbor supermassive black holes. Uh, about the, the, this one that talks about the dwarf uh, galaxy. This was uh, from 2014, just a few years ago. We're watching a theory unfold. One possible answer to the question, how did a tiny dwarf galaxy end up with a supermassive black hole five times larger than the one at the center of our Milky Way galaxy? This animation by University of Queensland astronomer Holgar Baumgart shows how a formerly substantial galaxy, seen here in yellow and red, which harbors an already mature black hole, would gradually relinquish most of its mass of stars, gas, and dust to the growing giant elliptical galaxy named M60 over the course of about 500 million years. As University of Utah astronomer Anil Seth and his team discovered, the dwarf ends up with a black hole weighing the same as about 21 million of our suns. That's a surprising 15% of the dwarf's entire mass. Winding the cosmic clock backwards now, we trace the close encounters of the two galactic cores along one possible set of orbits. Every large galaxy is thought to have a supermassive black hole at its center, composed of collapsed stars and captured gas. Our Milky Way's central black hole masses about the same as four million of our suns. But the monster in M60 is more than a thousand times heavier, 
about four and a half billion solar masses. In this visualization, we can see where some of that mass came from. The diminutive dense dwarf may once have held 10 billion stars of its own. For Space.com, I'm Dave Brody. Space.com. Moving, moving down in mass to <clears throat> from the supermassive down to the intermediate mass uh, black holes, uh, we again see that uh, they lie in the range of 100 to 10,000 solar masses. And um, these uh, objects have been also identified by the X-rays that they produce. This is one example in which there is a strong uh, X-ray source in M82. Uh, and uh, of course, all the X-ray sources are uh, located with the Chandra. And in this case, this um, the black hole is uh, supposed to be about 500 solar masses. Now, this most intermediate uh, mass black holes are in globular clusters. And there are computer simulations that show how these uh, form from a collision between stars. In this video from 2014, um, there is a, a mid-sized black hole that has some sort of a rhythmic pulsation that um, is uh, allowing us to observe it. Using archival data from NASA's decommissioned RXTE X-ray satellite, Researchers have discovered a rare type of black hole lurking in M82, a galaxy about 12 million light years away. Known as M82 X1, the object is the galaxy's brightest X-ray source. It was long suspected of being an exceptional mid-sized black hole, too big to be made by a dying star, yet much smaller than the monsters found in the hearts of galaxies. But definitive evidence had never materialized. Now, through careful analysis of RxDE data, Astronomers have shown that M82X1 weighs in at about 400 times the mass of our Sun. Measured masses for black holes formed by stars reach about 25 solar masses, and those found in galaxy centers weigh at least 10,000 times more. Only a handful of black holes have been discovered with inferred masses between these extremes. Astronomers measured M82X1 by finding a special signature in its X-ray glow. Hot gas orbiting a black hole emits X-rays, Near the brink of the black hole, various physical effects create hot spots, which produce variations as they orbit. These signals encode important clues to the black hole's mass. One important signal comes in the form of stable pairs with a 3 to 2 relationship, meaning that one flashes three times for every two flashes of the other. In searching through six years of RxDE observations of M82X1, astronomers recently found this key signature. One hotspot flashes 5.1 times a second, while the other flickers 3.3 times a second. A solid 3 to 2 relationship. These signals, combined with other previously established variations, pointed to an accurate mass of about 400 suns. With that finding, M82X1 now joins the exclusive club of middle mass black holes. That video sounds very nice, but um, in space there no, there's no sound. Finally, we move down all the way to the primordial black holes. And um, these uh, were uh, are, uh, objects that are supposed to have been produced at the beginning of the universe. And they are extremely small in mass, but um, because of that, they are also hard to detect. and um, so the theory says that they should exist, and if they do, one of them can come and kill us one of these days. And my friend here, Hakim, w talks about this in this National Geographic uh, video. So um, this is us, this is uh, me with uh, my friends Hakim and Edmundo Garcia, 
at the Lawrence Berkeley Lab in 2012. I'm a nuclear, low energy nuclear physicist, a high energy nuclear physicist, and this guy is in astronomy. So let me run the video for you. Tickets, please. Ticket? There you go. We actually live in an incredibly precarious place in the cosmos. We live on the outer layers of a ball of molten rock that is itself a tiny speck around a small star that's one of 200 billion stars in a galaxy that's spinning its way through a universe of 200 billion other galaxies. Tickets. There are all sorts of very fast, very dangerous objects racing around out there in the galaxy. And if they come into our neighborhood, they will do some very real damage. Just about all these objects reflect light. So chances are, we'd see them coming from a very long way off. There are other projectiles we would never see coming. And one of those is called a primordial black hole. A primordial black hole does not reflect any light. Therefore, it's essentially invisible to us. What time will we be getting to date? 30 minutes. Thank you. A primordial black hole is different from these huge black holes we often read about. It's a theoretical space body that we believe is left over from the Big Bang. It's a very, very small object. It can be smaller even than an atom. And yet it's incredibly dense and heavy, possessing perhaps one-tenth the mass of the Earth. And with those properties, if one of them was to collide with the Earth, it could shoot through us like a bullet through an apple. Take it. Harry, look out at the sky. Are you seeing this? And of course, that's the end of, uh, of the train, the end of the world, and the end of the section. And um, I have uh, four more questions for you. These questions, of course, I want you to please uh, look at them, answer them, in, and before you check the answers, uh, here they are. <laughs> 